This is the Gigabyte G6X specs breakdown real quick. We got an i7-13650HX, six performance cores, eight efficiency cores. It was pretty good in Cinebench R23, reasonable CPU performance around 17,000, the best run being 17,775 for Cinebench R23. RTX 4060 performed pretty admirably, around 10,700 in Times by GPU score, 13,000 on the Times by CPU score, very good. Overall, the performance in nearly every game at 1080p was adequate with a little bit of tweaking here and there. But overall, we're talking about a pretty good all-around gamer from a, just a pure gaming perspective. But there are a number of other flaws with this system that makes me hesitant to recommend it at full price. I would definitely wait until this thing goes under $1,000 before I would pull the trigger on the 4060 version probably 900 or maybe 950 for the 4050 version, okay? Some strengths to this is that this does have 32 gigs of DDR5 memory, which is great, because there's a number of games that do want more than 16 gigs of RAM nowadays, and a one terabyte SSD is a large SSD, and game sizes are getting crazy. Black Myth Wukong was 130 gigs, and God of War Ragnarok was 148 gigs, I think, of storage space. So between those two games alone, it was 300 gigs, or one-third of this SSD for two games now. And I think the game sizes are just going to keep getting more and more crazy. You also have extra SSD upgradability in this. So you have an extra SSD slot you can easily pop in. You got a full HD+, plus, meaning 16 by 10 aspect ratio, which means this display is a little bit taller, a little bit better for vertical content. And 330 nits is about right. 45% NTSC translates to about 70% sRGB. We tested today at 325 nits brightness. And our display test, which is above average for a budget gaming laptop, contrast ratio is also very good at over 1300. I think it was 1350. Hinge is solid enough, about an average hinge. I don't think it's going to fall apart, but it's not super firm. It's a little bit flimsy to the hinge. Uh, flex, it does have some flex, especially more towards the middle here. The keyboard especially is this mesh keyboard. It feels pretty soft to type on. Some people are going to like that. We got a single zone RGB across of it, uh, across the whole thing. It does not light up super bright. As you can see right now, it is a blue black light and you can't really see it very well at all. It's not a very visible RGB backlight. So it's not very stylish in that sense. Only if it's like in a really dark environment is the RGB going to pop out very much. Weighing this thing was 5.65 pounds. The bottom was fairly easy to remove. 12 Phillips head screws and just pop this, uh, pop it off from the middle of the side and uh, gently remove it. And you've got access to your sodium slots to upgrade the RAM up to 64 gigs. You got the second SSD slot that's upgradable. You got the battery there and you can clean out the fans. Uh, the fan cooling clearly is very adequate in this machine with very minimal times do we ever see the temps go above 70 really. Only in a couple of the games uh, did we see the temps go up and that was because it was more CPU bound and it was pulling like 80 watts plus while the GPU was active and that's when it was pushing over 90 degrees. But generally, no thermal throttling except in Cinebench R23 where we saw thermal throttling on one core and the rest of them were in the 80s. The ports on this guy, we got two USB A's, two USB C's, and we have a DisplayPort 1.4 on the port in the rear for the USB C, HDMI 2.1, so you do have good display output. You also have power delivery charging for the USB C on the right side, which is good, but I wish there was five USBs total. Probably three USB C's, two USB A's would be ideal, I think. And then I really wish this thing had a full size SD card slot. If it had those two changes, it would be a great port selection. As it is right now, it's kind of a bare bones ports selection overall. The BIOS was extremely bare bones and absolutely no point to go into the BIOS. Don't recommend spending time going in there. Uh, bloatware, this thing didn't really come with much bloatware. Giant thumbs up. I don't think it came with uh, an antivirus or anything else extra installed. Good job. Webcam quality was above average. I think I gave it a 7.5 or an 8. It had good clarity, good color replication. It just had some noise to the webcam itself. 
And that was the main issue. Mic quality was also clear, but it also wasn't super high fidelity, but you could clearly understand my voice and hear what I was saying. So good enough for speakerphone calls and Skype calls and stuff like that. The mouse, as far as I can tell, is a plastic touchpad. It works well. It's a little bit mushy though, so I don't really like the click feel of it. I definitely think it could still be improved. It is a large size, could be a little bit larger, but still it's large enough and it works well enough. No, no major complaints. It's just not a very premium experience. Same for the keyboard. Keyboard, it, it feels good to use generally. It's got lots of keyboard shortcuts and it's got a number pad, arrow keys. It's just not a great keyboard to use. It's not premium feeling. It's not, it doesn't have premium backlighting. It's, it, I feel like, especially with the keyboard, the trackpad, and the display quality, those three areas are the key weaknesses on this machine. Performance on this machine for the money is pretty good, especially if you get this thing when it's on sale. But for the premium features that this laptop offers, I feel like those key things are very important. And I feel that's where the Gigabyte G6X currently falls behind the competition. You look at laptops like the Asus F15, the Acer Nitro series, they just have brighter backlight, uh, snazzier looking overall design. Like I think the design on this is this mixture of a muted old businessy laptop with gamer aesthetics drawn on the corners and the sides uh, and the back, you know, like we got a metal top lid, plastic keyboard deck, plastic front hinge, plastic bottom, Overall build quality is pretty meh, you know, like it, it feels like this is kind of a more budgety business laptop, but with gamer sticker logo put on the side. So I say either it needs to be, this thing needs to either embrace the gaming ethos uh, next time. Like if Clevo or whoever designed this chassis, uh, you know, if Gigabyte's going to have used this chassis in the future, encourage Clevo to go all out gamer or to go all out with a neutral, like, classy look. Because you, the, the whole mixing of the two just doesn't work that well. Laptop control software, Gigabyte Control Center works well enough, but the UI is confusing. You've got, like, 12 different fan profiles, and you have, like, a major category and then a subcategory, is the way I would, I would think of it. Under performance, you got the highest performance modes. Under entertainment, you got a medium performance modes. And under quiet, you got quiet modes, but within each of those, you also have additional fan profile options down below. It's just not as intuitive as something like Armory Crate where you just click one thing, you want it to be quiet and that's all you need, or medium performance like balanced or high performance or turbo. And those are, your, those are all the only options you really need. So I'd prefer a simplified down version of the UI. You only need four or five total profiles at most you don't need to have so many different options there. Speakers on this are loud, but the clarity is not particularly good. So overall speakers were only about a seven. It's got two speakers and the bass is pretty meh, but the mids and the highs can sound pretty good when it's just the mids and the highs. And it can get pretty loud, so you can hear your games pretty good, but it's just everything can sound a bit muddled, especially when there's a lot going on with the audio. A to 64 RAM speed was in the 66,000, 64,000, 62,000. And the nano speed, uh, the nanoseconds on the response rate was not great. It was not bad. It was basically average speed RAM for DDR5 RAM. Good enough. No problems with the memory, pretty much. SSD speeds were also very fast. Like, no issues with the, the, the SSDs, other than the test, for some reason, showed 100 megabytes on the large sequential read and then 100 on the second desk. I couldn't get it to test fast on all of the categories at the same time for some reason. I don't know if something was accessing the SSD when I was doing testing or what, but it was. I did do multiple runs and it kept messing up. So Apex Legends, we did ghost testing for display ghost testing and there is pretty noticeable smearing, smudginess going on with the display when you turn quickly. 
And this could be the lack of G-Sync or it's just because the display has a slower response rate overall causing minor ghosting to happen all the time. And it just does not feel good. After using an OLED display as my main desktop display now or my Blade 18 display or other high quality gaming displays, coming to this, it just, I feel like I'm not seeing the full detail because it's all a little bit smudged for some reason and it's because of the ghosting on the display. I think Gigabyte needs to get a better quality display that's a higher response rate display that has a higher color gamut as well in the next version of this. So if you are comparing this to some of the other machines out there like that Asus Tough F15, that does not have any ghosting on that display. That has G-Sync and that has 100% sRGB. So it's more colorful. It's, it's about the same brightness and it's just a way crisper gaming experience. So I, I, when I compare this to the competition, the display is basically a deal breaker because uh, it's not that bad of an experience if you're on a budget. But if there are other budget options that don't have that, that problem and they have higher quality keyboard and mouse, I'm like, just get the other laptop. This is not the one for you. Baldur's Gate 3, great FPS, like 180, I think. Black Myth, Wukong, all, all, all cinematic settings, full ray tracing. We were doing 80, 75 FPS in the fights. Uh, but the benchmark did average 60. So I'd probably turn off ray tracing if you want to boost the FPS. Counter-Strike 2, we're doing 180 FPS, uh, 200 FPS quite often. Cyberpunk 2077, 83 FPS. God of War, we did 66. But in God of War Ragnarok, we were doing 150 in similar settings, but with frame gen. So keep that in mind. It's still, God of War Ragnarok, way more optimized than God of War, which is incredibly interesting that a newer game that looks exactly as good as the previous game has almost tripled the FPS, like two and a half times more FPS. So that's giant thumbs up. Witcher 3, uh, at full ray tracing, everything turned on ultra with frame gen on and DLSS on quality. We didn't quite get enough FPS. I think we were in the 70s. I would turn off ray tracing and boom, we were up into the 120s, 130s, and we were off to the races. So with just a little bit of tweaking, the performance on this machine is great. You can play a lot of games and have a, a really good time. Uh, but this thing is not a very premium chassis. It's not a very premium keyboard. It's not a very premium display. And it's not a very premium touchpad. So don't pay a premium price for this. I, I feel like given the pricing that we're seeing on other laptops, if I go to my top gaming laptop list, which is linked in the description down below, you can see the top deals right now are insanely better value than this laptop. Like the Asus Tough F15 right here, insane value. Link in linked in the description. If you need to pick up a good laptop, check out my top 10 deals right here. You can get some really great deals. Acer Nitro V16, again, a better CPU, um, a better display, cheaper price. That's my thoughts on it right now. I mean, it's not that it's a bad laptop. It's that it's a bad laptop compared to the competition. And, and that's just how it is. Uh, that's the proper way, I think, to review this guy just because it is lackluster in certain er key areas that do matter a lot to the end user. If you care about keyboard, trackpad, and display, which most laptop users care deeply about, this laptop has some pretty glaring weaknesses. So I'm hoping Gigabyte uh, slash Cleva will step up their game for 2025 and put out a higher quality laptop. Or it's okay if they undercut the price versus the competition as well. If they want to put out this more budgety laptop, but they got to just put it out at a more budgety price. I hope you guys enjoyed this unboxing review of the Gigabyte G6X. I know it was a little bit brutal today, but it's just honesty. That's what we're talking about, hopefully on this channel at all times, always trying to be honest with you about all the pros and cons of buying a laptop and evaluating the tech on the market. So we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks so much for watching. Brandon out. Is that?